If you haven't been given the wonderful opportunity already in your physics class, then you will, at some point this year, get to play with mirrors and lenses. What we're interested in when we do this is how light, which we remember is just a regular wave, behaves when it hits different kinds of mirrors and different kinds of lenses. All of the experiments and diagrams we're going to be showing you in this section are going to look more or less like the sample one we've got here. On the far left, in yellow, we have some object. Lots of times it'll be a pencil. Occasionally, MCA will get all creative and they might make it a pen. Whatever it is though, we call it the object. The object gets placed on a flat surface, like a desk. Usually to its right, there will be either a lens or a mirror. Here it's a lens, for no particular reason. The distance between the object and the lens is called DO. When objects get placed in front of lenses and mirrors, they produce an image. For example, stand in front of a mirror and you'll see an image of yourself in that mirror. The image here is on the far side of the lens mirror. But that won't always happen. The distance between the image and the mirror, or lens, is called DI. What else? Well, all mirrors and lenses have a focus, which is a special point that rays of light pass through. The distance from the mirror or lens to the focus is called the focal length. When we're dealing with mirrors and lenses, the sign of numbers, you know, positive and negative, become more important than it's ever been before in physics. For example, there's a few rules you need to know. For any kind of mirror, DI will be positive if the image is on the left side of the mirror, and it will be negative if the image is on the right side. For any kind of lens, DI will be negative if the image is on the left side of the lens, and positive if it's on the right. So they're just the reverse of each other. You can remember this by thinking, in a mirror the light rays are supposed to bounce back, right? So it's normal for the image to be on the same side as the object, and so in this situation, DI is positive. Sometimes, actually almost all the time, in this external, the lens or the mirror has the effect of making the image smaller or larger than the original object. We use a special number called the magnification to describe this. The equation to find the magnification looks like this. M equals the image height over the object height, which is also equal to the negative of the image distance over the object distance. The second equation we'll be using to make our calculations is this one. 1 over the focal length equals 1 over the image distance plus 1 over the object distance. Great. Now let's move on to the truly thrilling part, which is the mirrors and the lenses. Curved mirrors, never flat mirrors like you're used to, come in two varieties, convex and concave. These two characters look like this. You can remember which is which because for the object on the left, the concave mirror will look like a cave. And a convex mirror? Well, it's just the other way around. Let's start with convex mirrors because they only have one situation associated with them. All convex mirrors have a focal distance which is negative, since the focus is on the right side of the mirror. We've stuck some object in front of a convex mirror. The way to figure out what the image will end up looking like is to sketch two different rays. The first one moves straight along from the top of the object, hits the mirror, and bounces up. The second one travels from the top of the object to the middle of the mirror and bounces off like this. Since our two light rays are moving away from each other pretty fast, we're forced to take them back behind the mirror to the right in order to draw the image. We extend them with a dashed line like this. What we end up with is an image on the right side of the mirror. If this all sounds a bit strange to you and you're thinking, don't mirrors always reflect light? Then you're spot on, because this image is actually imaginary or virtual. Any image on the right side of a mirror will be virtual because the light rays don't actually go there. What else can we say about the image? Since it's standing up the right way, we can say it's upright. And because it's smaller, we can say that it's diminished. So that was the only thing that can ever happen when something is dumped in front of a convex mirror. Things, sadly for us, get more complicated with a concave mirror. Before we start, you should really make a mental or physical note that all concave mirrors have a focal distance that's positive. So we've gone and stuck a pencil into a desk in front of a concave mirror. The super important thing here is that the distance between the pencil and the mirror, DO, is more than the focal distance. So we start by drawing two more important rays. The first goes from the top of the pencil to the mirror, but gets reflected down through the focus, which makes things easy for us. Then we draw a ray from the pencil through the focus, 
When this ray hits the mirror, it reflects horizontally. All in all, we end up with this. Nice. So for the concave lens situation, the image is real, inverted, and diminished. So that was situation one, and you'll hopefully agree that it was pretty much straightforward to hammer out. What would happen though if we moved our pencil closer to the mirror? Since the focal distance of a mirror never changes, there'd be nothing stopping us from moving the pencil in front of the focus. Well, we haven't heard any sirens yet, so we're going to assume nobody minded us doing this. The two rays we draw now are exactly the same as the two we drew before. We end up with rays like this. The only way we can make an image is by using that dashed line trick we pulled with our convex mirror. The dashed lines which pass through the mirror to the right side give us this final image. So for the second situation in the concave mirror, the image that gets produced will always be virtual, upright, and enlarged. Let's now use those equations we showed you a couple of minutes ago to figure out the new image distance. Let's say that we already know these values. The object distance is 5 cm and the focal length is 8 cm. We're going to use this handy equation. 1 over f equals 1 over dA plus 1 over do. So we can simply stick in our numbers and we get 1 over 8 equals 1 over dA plus 1 over 5. Rearranging and solving we find the image distance is negative 13.3 centimeters. Should this number be negative? The answer to that question is yes, it certainly should. We know this because we can see in the diagram above that the image of the pencil is behind the mirror, which makes it virtual. Therefore, the image distance will always be negative. Whereas you're used to the idea that the point of mirrors is to reflect light, the point of a lens is to refract the light. Don't be afraid though, there's nothing that you're about to learn that wasn't any tougher than the mirror stuff. Like mirrors, we get two kinds of lenses. Concave lenses work in the simplest ways, so let's start there. The focal distance for a concave lens is always negative, because the focus is located on the same side as the object. Concave lenses are also called diverging lenses, because when light rays hit them, they spread out. Here's a simple setup. We normally draw two different rays with lenses. The first ray travels from the object horizontally across to the lens, where it gets refracted upwards. The second ray travels through the center of the lens without being diverged. If we extend the first ray back, we end up with this image. Since the image is not on the far side of the lens, like you probably think it would be, we can say that the image that gets produced is virtual. Simply by looking at the diagram, we can also say with confidence that it is upright and it is diminished. Let's move on to the final kind of lens and mirror, which is called a convex lens. Like we saw with concave mirrors, there's two different situations we can run into, and they depend on whether the object is placed in front of or behind the focus of the lens. Even though there's technically two foci for these lenses, we use a positive focal length. Unlike concave lenses, which cause the light to diverge and spread apart, Concave lenses are converging lenses because they bring the light rays together once they get refracted. Here's the simple setup, where the object is behind the focus. We can draw three different rays here to help us out. The first one goes horizontally across from the object and then passes through the far focus. The second one moves through the middle of the lens and escapes being bent at all. And the third ray moves through the first focus, then gets refracted horizontally across. So all in all, the thing we end up with is this. What kind of image have we got here? Clearly it's real, and it's also inverted. At this distance it seems to be neither enlarged nor diminished, but either is possible. Is it as utterly fantastic as what you've come to expect from studying light? We sure hope so. It gets better of course. Like we mentioned earlier, there is also the possibility that the object gets pushed in front of the focus which was also possible with concave mirrors, you know, like this. We can only draw two of the three rays we managed in our last diagram, but that doesn't really matter to us, thankfully. If we extend those lines back, because right now they're never going to meet, we get this image. And so the image we end up with is virtual, enlarged, and upright. Wonderful. Remember, the image distance is positive on the left side of a mirror and on the right side of a lens. Concave lenses diverge rays, while convex lenses converge them. We look for an image where the rays converge on the focal point. If rays diverge, 
we can draw imaginary rays back to create a virtual image.